Hello everyone, welcome to Bread and Bed. Today we're gonna talk about a documentary of Man's Red Movement called The Red Pill. Well, it is very inspiring for me to see things in different perspective. So let's get started. An article on website, A Voice for Men, announced October to be Bash of Oil and Beach Mounds. A Voice for Men is an online hub for men's rights activists and was founded by a man called Paul Elam, where many men get together to express their hatred to women. The website is also condemned by feminists. When the world is always talking about feminism, is the world still need men's rights movement? Hasn't men already managed the world these days? What are the standpoints for men's rights? In this film, we will hear different voices from both men and women's rights, which shows us a multi-dimensional society structure. It seems like we are living in a patriarchal world where most of the world's nations still have never had a female leader. Less than 20% of U.S. Congress are women, and less than 5% of CEOs of Fortune 500 companies are women. Most of the feminists believe that patriarchy causes gender inequality. Well, MRA's thought is that patriarchy is a result of gender rules, which is vice versa. Men's rights activists do not deny the existence of patriarchal society. In traditional gender roles, women's responsibility is more about to reproduce and take care of next generation while men shall focus on the production, providing, and protecting. MRA addressed that both men and women are victims of patriarchal society, where men yield to traditionally expected gender roles. Men are trained to be disposable. In Dr. Warren Farrow's The Myth of Male Power, Every society that survived, survived based on its ability to train its sons to be disposable. Disposable in wars as warriors, disposable at work as firefighters, coal miners, oil drillers, indirectly, there are the disposable deaths. 93% of workplace fraternities are men. Most of the military war deaths are men. Male are sentenced 63% more prison time for the same crime as female. Male are more likely to get sentenced, prisoned, and even executed when innocent. The other example is that women and children priority rule. Women can have privileges and protections while men did not. Perhaps we value male's work more than female work. Meanwhile, we value female life more than male's life. Limited decision rights about children. Males usually have limited rights on decision to have children, as well as the exposure to children. In the Moy Serpico, a woman decided to be a single mother and tricked the police to have a children without permission. Although the court was informed the trick thing, but still rewarded her over 90% of the male's pension. Well, 
for people advocate women rights, they argue that the man's ability on decision is whether or not engaging in sex or using protections. Men's rights need to be exercised early. Once the girl is pregnant, she is the most impacted one. She is the one facing with continuing pregnancy, health risk, and other impacts. And most decisions should be hers. Of all custodial parents, more than 80% are women. Women usually have more rights for children and men have to fight for children. In feminist mind, women in broader patterns, it is still the case that women are doing the vast majority of housework and childcare. And there are a lot of father absence, lack of participation or other bad participants of father. And we should reference the behavior before divorce as an asymmetry of what will happen after divorce. Paternity fraud. What if the man's tricked into fatherhood? Or what if he is not even the father? For example, when a woman got pregnant but not sure who the father is, she might eventually point out a possible guy. Or when a woman knew who the biological father is, but point to an irrelevant guy, which is paternity fraud. An extreme example, a woman had no idea who her child's biological father is wrote down an irrelevant guy as the father since she need to write down someone to get welfare assistance. Later, the man is facing jail time for failure to pay child support for child that DNA proves isn't his. The law has to be changed. There is another big problem inside family, domestic violence. It turns out one in three women and one in four men will experience physical violence by an intimate partner in their lifetime. There's slightly more female victims, while still 43% of domestic violence victims are men. But in the United States, there are over 2,000 domestic violence shelters. All of them served female victims, while nearly all of them turned away men victims. In 2016, there is only one domestic violence shelter for men. When talking about domestic violence, people think about women as victims first. We had a blind spot when women do bad things. In 2014, the CDC released a report revealing that over 5.4 million men and over 4.7 million women had been victimized of intimate partner of physical violence within the previous 12 months. The red pew and the blue pew Swallow the red pew, you will face the truth and see what you haven't seen before. Take the blue pew, you will go back and sleep and live with your normal life. Personally, I think we need red pews during the advancement of the society and the courage to listen to other voices. Well, this documentary is very inspiring for me though there is a feeling that some extreme examples were used. Anyway, it's hard to me to make any decisions or pick part, since I can draw out a lot from my own experience about women issues, but nothing about men. Also, let's quickly go through some disadvantages about being women. Wage gap. 
female get less payment than their male counterparts in workplace, which is about 16% in average. Second, women mean to shoulder more domestic burdens in general, and also more impact on parenthood. The third one, women's product could be more expensive, which you can search the pink tax. In some remote area, women are thought to be inferior and they have limited right for education and also other advancement opportunities, which I think is the most severe one. Okay, so let's go back to the film. But you know what? After watching that documentary, I think the men and the women rights actually are not opposed to each other. But to some extent, they are talking about the same thing, more attention and respect to individuals. It's not the gender, but the person itself that should be seen and to be focused on. I think men and women are all human beings that we share much, much more similarities than differences than we expected. Women could be strong, while men could also have some soft part. We should try to be some sort of gender blind and give up the preconceived notions and entitle everyone with the basic right. The right to be born and raised for education, for fair competition, and the right to be protected against any disasters or violence. And uh, I always feel it's a hard topic for sexual equality or any equality itself, because usually it can only be fair instead of equal, since everyone born differently in massive factors that could not be quantified. Uh, personally, I think men and women should not be against to each other, but in collaboration. Also, before talking about rights, we shall understand that more rights means that you need to bear more obligations and no part shall be granted privilege eventually. A good thing I personally think is that for most people living in the modern society, if there are any inequality, it's more of stereotype or prejudice than the real sexism. But there might be a long way to go for a less developed area. Another good thing is that we hear more voices drawing attention to this topic. People choose to take the red pills, which push thinking, developing, and understanding. It will generally turn better when people get more understanding to themselves and others. All in all, I think I stand for both men and women rights. And I stand for anyone as a human being have right to be protected, to be educated, and showing their full potentials. Thank you for watching. Hope you have a great day. Bye bye. See you next.